Yo, 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 what up players? Hope all is well. Welcome to the place where everything is legit and where you're in good hands. Today, we're gonna be building a PC with a budget around 900 USD. We're gonna be using the RTX 3050 and a Ryzen 5 5600X processor. The way we do things is first, we go over all the parts and their prices. Then I show you guys how to build the thing from start to finish. You're gonna have full confidence in building your own rig. And then at the very end, we're gonna put our rig to the test against a lot of current popular titles. All right, guys, let's get into it. Our graphics card, RTX 3050. All graphics card prices have now gone back down. We are at current record lows. 330 bucks for this 3050 by EVGA. It's a beast card, 240 FPS on eSport titles. So for our CPU, the 5600X. This is a six core processor with a stock heatsink, which we will be using. And not only is this gonna help our 3050 have constant frames and not bottleneck at all, but it's also great for rendering. If you wanna render a video, it's good for that. Content creation and streaming. Great CPU. We're pairing it with a B550 chipset motherboard. This is an MSI board, ATX form factor. And what's really, really, really important is that sticker right here that says Ryzen 5000 series ready, which means no BIOS update. You pop in your CPU, it's ready to go because we don't want to deal with those BIOS updates. And ZNXT, H510 flow in black. Great airflow, easy to install stuff within it. Great case. Our RAM, 16 gigs, Corsair Vengeance, 3600 megahertz. Storage, M.2, WD Blue, trusted brand, 500 gigabytes. Windows is going to boot up quick. Games that are installed in here are going to boot up quick. And finally, our juice. Bronze rated by EVGA, 650 watts, semi-modular, so great cable management. One more thing, I haven't picked out a Funko Pop, so we're just gonna go ahead and choose one. I'm gonna pick this Halo Infinite Funko. Okay, here we go, perfect. All right, baby, let's build this thing. So first, we're gonna be working with our motherboard and our Ryzen 5 5600X. All right, guys, so if you take a look at the bottom left-hand side of our CPU, you're gonna find a little golden arrow. So we're lining up the CPU arrow with the arrow on the motherboard, which is on the top left of the CPU socket. First thing we're gonna do is pull the lever to the side and then all the way up. Now I'm lining up the arrow with the other arrow. And the CPU is just gonna drop right in like that. We're not pushing it in ever because you can bend these pins. We don't wanna do that. Hover it over and drop it in. See, that's how it's gonna look on your board, guys. Lever all the way back down. Next, we're gonna remove these two things. And we did that so we can install our heatsink. So the stock AMD heatsink has pre-applied thermal paste, so you don't have to worry about it. I'm gonna have the AMD text on the left side of the board, and I'm gonna line up all four points with these four points. All right, cool. Every screw sitting on one of the points. Now we're gonna secure it. So first I'm gonna secure one of them a little bit, not all the way, and then I'm gonna go ahead and rotate to the one totally across to keep even pressure and secure that one a little bit as well, not all the way. Okay, cool, that's attached. Now I'll move on to the other two. And now I'm gonna fully tighten all of them. And you can't over tighten it because it will stop you. So just keep going till your screwdriver stops. So now we're gonna hook up the fan cable to the CPU header, which is right here, labeled CPU fan. And there you go. All right, awesome guys, CPU's done. We're gonna move into our RAM installation now. We want our RAM to run in dual channel mode, so we're gonna go over to our RAM slots. We're gonna be pulling the levers back of the second slot and the fourth slot. The RAM only goes in one way, so make sure you line up the indent on the RAM stick correctly. So once I have it in there, I'm gonna push down with both thumbs equally. Boom, this is gonna clip back up, and we're gonna do the same for the other one. All right, cool, guys, RAM's installed. Now we're gonna install our storage, 500 gigs. And this little guy's gonna go right here. So we're gonna need a smaller screwdriver. All right, let's get the heat sink out of here. Make sure that you remove the protective film. So we're gonna line up our M.2, and we're gonna push it in. Remember the little bag we got out of the motherboard with the screws? Now we need it. So we're gonna use this to secure the SSD. So now we're gonna push our SSD down and secure it with the screw. Done, now we can put the heat sink back on. All right, awesome guys, good job so far. Now we're gonna put our motherboard inside our case. Ooh, there's a lot of static here. Look at that, look at all that static, guys. So what you probably don't wanna do is uh, get this static charge and like, when you have static on you, all you have to do is touch metal and it's gone. Now you can touch this, touch it all over. What you wanna do first when putting a motherboard inside any case is you wanna make sure that all the motherboard standoffs inside the case are in the appropriate positions for your board. So this is ATX form factor, and this case already has a standoffs and ATX layout. So we're good to go, no worries. First things first is we're gonna install our IO shield. We're gonna put it in like this right here for the ethernet is on the right side of the case. So we're gonna put it in from the inside, line it up and snap it in. There we go. Make sure you snap all four corners. So the screws we need come with the case. They're located in the drive cage right here. Got that. Laying our case flat. When we put in our board, we're gonna line up 
are ports of the board with the IO shield first. So I do it at a slight angle and I make sure no metal of the IO shield is covering my ports. Then I proceed to lay it down. First thing I wanna do is line up the middle standoff. So I lined it up with the middle standoff, it went in. And the middle standoff does not require a screw. All the other standoffs around it do require a screw. We're gonna screw in eight of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we're gonna be using the 632 screw flat. All right, our motherboard's in. Now we're gonna install our power supply. The screws to secure the power supply come with the case, but they also come with the power supply. So guys, semi-modular power supply, right? Some of the cables are connected, some are not. We actually do not have to connect any more cables. All the cables we need for this build are already hooked up to it. We have our big 24 pin power cable, CPU power cable, and we have our graphics card power cable. And that's actually all we need, so we're good to go. When putting in the power supply, make sure that the fan is facing down. And let's secure it. Also for our power supply, this is optional, but I like to use power supply extension cables. These come in all sorts of colors and I'll link them in the video description. So the big 24 pin that would plug into the motherboard, instead it's gonna plug into the extension. And then the other side of the extension to the motherboard. Like I said, optional, but looks dope. And then the other one I'm gonna hook up to our PCI Express cable for our graphics card. The CPU one, I don't use an extension because I don't care, you can't even really see it. All right guys, we're almost done. Now we gotta connect our cables. Don't be intimidated, we're gonna take it one cable at a time. Two sets of cables, our power supply cables and the cables of the case. The case cables connect power button, USB port, and for your audio and whatnot. First, let's connect the case cables. Our HD audio cable, it's gonna connect bottom left of the motherboard. Now, if we move all the way to the right side of the motherboard, we're gonna connect our JFP1 cable. And it should look like that, only goes in one way. Now, right next to it on the left, our USB 3.0 cable only goes in one way. So the side that's flat goes on the bottom. Where it's not flat, that's gonna go on top and it should look like that only goes in one way. You can't plug in these cables wrong because if you have it in the wrong position, it would just won't even go in. And the last cable is our USB type C cable. Right here is where it goes. Again, only one way. And boom, got it in on my first try. Those are all the case cables, easy. All right, power supply cables, guys. So right next to what we just plugged in, we're gonna plug in our big 24 pin cable. So see how we have a clip right here? That clip needs to clip back here. So line it up and then I'm gonna push in. So I hear the clip, I heard the clip and I'm verifying, yup, it's all good. That looks good to me. Top left side of the case, our CPU cable. So again, this needs to clip back here on top and it's in. Last power cables, our graphics card, we'll get to this in a bit. Now what we need to do is hook up both of the fans that come with the case. So here's the two fan cables. We're gonna plug in one right here, system fan five and system fan four. All right, done guys. These are three pin fans, so one of the pins is not gonna be connected. All right, guys, the graphics card, the 35th, yeah! What is this? An installation guide, guys. Wow. Useless! Here it is, looks good, it has a nice back plate. All right, let's go ahead and remove all the protective film. Our card's gonna go into our first PCI slot. We need to make room for it by removing the second and third brackets. Those are out of the way. We're gonna pull this lever all the way back. We're gonna line that up so we have it in there and it's good. And push it in. And that clip will go back up. And it looks clean. We're securing it. It's in, it's secure, and it's got its juice. Everything is done. A couple more important things for the aesthetics. A Funko Pop, and then I'm gonna throw in one RGB strip in there. Well, look how easy it was, guys. Anyone can do this. All right, guys, here we go, first boot up. Ooh, crispy, that looks good. I'm really satisfied with this build and you will be too. Let's put it to the test after we install some stuff. All right guys, so before we start frying it up, first we're gonna install Windows 10 from a USB flash drive. I made a video on how to create one of these for free. It's linked in the video description or you can just buy one of these at like Best Buy or something. Next, we're gonna be installing all the drivers we need so the PC can be fully functional. Then we're gonna make sure our RAM is running at its rated speed. Then we are going to start playing. That's it, it's gonna be quick, let's do it. So first I'm gonna hook up the Windows 10 flash drive to the PC and then I'm gonna turn it on. We're selecting 64-bit, enter. All right, next, install now. I don't have a product key, next. I'm gonna be installing Windows 10 Pro. So I'm gonna select custom install. If you had more than one drive hooked up to your PC, you would select the drive you want Windows to be installed onto. We only have one M.2 SSD, that's where we're installing Windows 10. So now we wait for it to copy all the Windows 10 files to our SSD. This is gonna be super quick because we have a beast PC. Okay, so it finished. Now we just need to wait for it to do its thing. When you get to the screen, you can disconnect your Windows flash drive. All files are copied over. 
All right guys, so we arrived at our desktop. I'm connected to the internet with my ethernet port. So first, we're gonna download our motherboard drivers. I'm gonna post a link to every website that we're visiting in the video's description to make it easier for you guys. So we're gonna go to driver, Windows 10 for us. If you're using Windows 11 though, there you go, Windows 11, but I'm using Windows 10. I'm gonna download the chipset driver and then I'm going to go to audio. And I'm gonna download the audio driver and we're gonna go over to LAN. I'm gonna download LAN driver, that's it. Now we're gonna move to utility. Again, Windows 1064. And I'm gonna download the MSI Center. This is how we're gonna change the colors of any lighting devices that are connected to your motherboard. Here's all my files and my downloads. I'm gonna take it to my desktop. Okay, first we need to right click and extract all these folders. We don't need the ones that are zipped anymore, delete. And here are our drivers. So first it's gonna be our LAN driver. Install all of them. I'll let it install all this, but for a PCI device driver, we're using an NVIDIA graphics card, so I'm gonna uncheck that install. So our MSI program is right here, so we can click this and change the colors if you want to. All right, it's done. I'll go ahead and restart our computer. Motherboard drivers installed. Now we're gonna install our graphics card drivers. We're gonna download the GeForce Experience program. Automatically keeps your drivers up to date for your graphics card. By the way, this program is only for NVIDIA graphics cards, which is what we're using, our RTX 3050. All right, so we're gonna head over to drivers and download the newest one. Express installation. All right, cool, that's done. Now we're gonna restart our computer and boot up to our BIOS to make sure our RAM is running at its rated speed. When the computer's restarting, you wanna click clicking delete on your keyboard to boot to your BIOS. Okay guys, so we're in our BIOS. As you can see, we're only running our RAM at 2,600 megahertz. We want it to run at 3,600 megahertz. It's rated speed. If not, you're paying for power and not even utilizing it. We're gonna click XMP profile one right here. This is now gonna have our RAM run at 3,600 megahertz. If you wanna double check though, go to memory. And here it is, XMP profile one, 3,600 megahertz. So now we're gonna go to X. Yes, we're enabling just that. And the computer's gonna boot up. All right, cool, we're back in. So we don't need our drivers anymore. Those are installed, delete. Let's check that our RAM's running at its rated speed. Control, Alt, delete. Task Manager, more details, performance, memory, 3600 megahertz. Boom. All right, last, we're gonna install a game. There's a lot of clients on PC. I'm gonna use Steam Client as an example. So once you're logged into your Steam account, you just click on a game and install it. And there we go, it's installing. We're completely done now, guys. Congratulations, good job. All right, guys, so if you were following along, congratulations. We're finally complete with everything. Time to put it to the test. Let's do it. We're gonna play a deathmatch of Valorant. Settings we're using, here they are, 1080p. We go to our quality. Settings are set to high. All this is off. Filtering times eight. Go to general. NVIDIA reflex low latency is on on plus boost. Let's do it. So we start off with, we'll start off with the pop. Oh, he choked. What are we doing? Beat her at her own game. Oh my goodness. All right, let's bring up this now. No, I'm winning this. You gotta hurry up. Go, 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 go. Get over here, you troll. No. Come on, yo. No! Ah! <laughs> Alright, we won. Alright, next game. Okay, guys, Apex time. I'm gonna play a match of arenas and the settings are rocking. 1080p here, the rest of the settings. NVIDIA reflex are enabled plus boost. There you go. Alright, guys, let's go for that 3 0. Ah! No! I missed everything. Alright, I gotta get better. I missed a lot of shots right there. Oh, here I go again, missing everything. Good job. Don't get shot, don't get shot, don't get shot, don't get shot. Ah! Give me my health. Give me it. <laughs> One more. That's how you do it, baby. All right, next game, guys. All right, guys. So Fortnite is still very much popular. We still here. We're gonna play some Fortnite Zero build. I'm gonna queue up with some randoms. I'm playing squads. Settings are rocking 100% 3D resolution, 1080p all the way down here, the rest of our settings, and then video reflex low latency on on plus boost. Let's go. Anyways, I'm having fun. This is real chill so far. How you guys doing? Hope you guys are chilling. Maybe you're eating a delicious meal. Maybe you're drinking a delicious beverage. Whatever it may be, 
I hope you're having a good time because I am. Oh crap. Watch out, shotgun homie G! No! I ain't got the uh, no uh. Hey guys, what does this do? Alright, let's go. Thank you. Oh crap! You're you're on your own, buddy. I'm out of here. Whoa! <laughs> Karma! Run! Oh crap, that's a lot of guys. Why do they block my bullets? What the Die! Go back from where you came from! You'll never take me alive! Uh, get some punk! That was our Fortnite gameplay. Next game. 1080p resolution. Reflex low latency on enabled plus boost. Our quality settings right here. 120 FOV. Go all the way down and there are our settings. Let's see how it performs. Warzone is uh, fairly demanding. Our 3050 has it covered. Alright, let's go. Fuck! What are these guys doing, man? They're under us, they're under us. Two under, two under. Hey, buddy. Bye bye. Sayonara. Merry Christmas. One guy on top. What? From where? Alright, where's our last homie at? Oh no, Bill. Game. It was a fun match though. PC's a beast, man. Gets the job done. Alright, guys, that's where we're gonna call it a wrap. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next build guide. Thanks for all the support. Peace and love. <laughs>